All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is when you hear this message, I pray that you're poised to receive, to accept, and to respond to words of wisdom. Ashe. So today I want to share a really powerful lesson on correction, a, a, a lesson on um, addressing discrepancies. Uh, as soon as you get two people together, it becomes of the utmost importance to establish rules of engagement. And the more people you have, the more important the rules are. So you start moving toward a family, toward a business, toward an organization, a city, a town, a country. Uh, it's essential that you've got rules and the rules have got to be very well defined, well understood and enforced with constancy. Right. Everybody gets it. You violate the rules, then, you know, you're subject to correction. However, the correction has to be, as they say, the, 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 the punishment has to suit the crime, right? We've got to be able to address people's, you know, missteps according to what the actual misstep is. As the Yoruba say, uh, decapitation is not a suitable remedy for a headache. We're not here to penalize our people. We're not here to shame our people. We're not here to uh, condemn our people. That's that's not the reason why we have rules. We have rules to uplift our people. We have rules to protect our people. We have rules in order to bring out the best in our people and create a safe environment for everybody to flourish, right? So the question becomes, how do you make sure that everyone adheres, but, you know, um, not to the detriment of when you make a, make a mistake. Why? Because also, as the Yoruba say, no one can walk without shaking his head. No matter how beautiful the sky may be, it won't be without blemish, which are the clouds. Everyone is going to make mistakes. Okay, so how do we enforce the rules when people make mistakes? And um, one, one, one thing, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that uh, when someone else makes mis the mistake, we we tend to want to drop the hammer as hard as we possibly can. Not knowing that, not remembering that all of us are, are making mistakes. Even at the time that we're trying to punish other people, you're making mistakes. OK, um, there's a there's a great verse of Ifa that is actually also a, a very popular folktale in your land. It talks about. The tortoise and the rabbit, for example. And the tortoise, Ajapa, is, you know, a big mouth. Ajapa is is known for being, you know, a, a pontificator. He talks and talks and talks and talks and talks. And the, the, the cat is his very close friend. Usually the cat tolerates Ajapa's yappity yappity yap. On this day, for whatever reason, the cat wasn't feeling it. So Ajapa makes a statement. He says, may we be uh, free from false accusations that would lead to unfair punishment. The cat just said enough is enough. Ajapa, there, nobody's going to be making false accusations. If you get in trouble, it's because you committed a, an offense and you deserve what you get. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ajapa didn't say anything, but he made up in his mind right then. I'm going to teach you a valuable lesson. So... That night, Cat went to sleep. Early the next morning, Ajapa went and got the farmer's favorite chicken. He killed that chicken and took the blood and smeared it all over the cat's mouth. And then he dripped a little bit of blood away and then made a trail and, and dropped a couple of feathers and blood and feathers, blood and feathers all the way out into the barn. And he throws the, the, the rooster's carcass, excuse me, the chicken's carcass in, into the barn. Next morning, farm, farmer goes out to the barn. He sees the dead chicken. Ah, Egags, my favorite chicken is dead. He follows the trail of feathers and blood right up to the, the house. And there he finds the cat with blood smeared all over his face. The farmer, boom, kicks the cat, runs him off. He's about to kill this cat. The cat runs into the, the woods. 
Then Ajapa goes and he he somehow goes and talks to the farmer and 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 and, and it makes it look as though the fox has actually killed the the uh, the uh, the cat. Excuse me, killed the uh, chicken. He tells the farmer that it wasn't the cat; it was the fox. Ah, uh, okay. So the farmer eases up and he lets the cat back into his graces. The next day, while they're sitting there and they're talking, Ajapa says, may we be free from false accusations that would lead to unfair punishment. This time the cat says, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. <laughs> he learned his lesson. Listen, it, 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 it's, it's the cat today, but it's, it's, it's you know someone else tomorrow. It's this guy on this week, but it could be you next week, right? No one is is free of of false accusation, uh, and likewise, no one is going to be able to move through the the journey of life without making some kind of mistake. The question is, how do we address mistakes when they're made? Anecdotally. I'm reminded of the way this lesson uh, played out for me um, when I worked at a school. Um, and it's interesting because this was a school in the hood, right? It was a it was a charter school, and the majority of the students were from the from the hood, you know. And the director of the school, however, was the former director of a very elite school in Washington, D.C., where the president's children, congressmen, senators, you know, their children went to this school. And so he approached things in a way that was unlike anything that any of us had ever seen who had been working like in a public school environment. One day, a group of teachers come to the to, this director it was before school started and these teachers were really frustrated because they had a group of students, you know, and they were the usual suspects, you know, Shaniqua and Devante and, and the Aquarius and them, they just acting up every day. And they're like, well, we can't take it anymore. We got to get rid of these. these we got to suspend them. We got to expel them. Something. We got to drop the hammer on these children. So that, you know, the director is sensing their frustration He's listening and, and he's, you know, hearing. He's like, okay, I'm hearing you that you want to be able to punish in this way. You want suspension. You want expulsion. You want this. Give me some idea of the infractions. Tell me what would merit someone being suspended. Tell me what would merit somebody being expelled. Tell me some what would merit the loss of all these privileges. Explain it to me. What would happen? Why would we, you know, impose these, these sanctions? So the teachers start... Talking about scenario A, scenario B, scenario C. He says, okay, I hear what you're saying, but now are we talking about kindergartners? Or are we talking about first graders? We're we talking about fourth graders? We're we talking about sixth graders? Like, give me more. Is it the first time or is it the second time? And the more he asked these clarifying questions, the more clear it became that what the teachers were asking for was just punitive. They, they hadn't really examined all the variables well enough to say why certain things had to be punished in a certain way. It, it wasn't as cut and dry as they wanted it to be, in other words, right? So, you know, you have feelings about situations. The, the, what I want to emphasize right now is that you have your own emotional response to one thing or another, and that's legitimate. You're entitled to that feeling. You have your own opinions about what should be and what should not be. That is also fair. Your opinion could be informed by a lot of different things, but you know what? It, it deserves being heard. You can have knowledge and, and information and expertise in a thing, and that also is, is valid. However, when you start to approach wisdom and you are interested in cultivating wisdom, then you will also constantly take into consideration that your feelings, your opinions, and your knowledge do not constitute understanding. They do not. It takes more than your feelings, your opinion, and your knowledge to come into understanding. And the way the, 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 the director taught this lesson was by, you know, telling us 
that a child wants to learn, that a child is naturally inclined toward learning. There's, they're built, they're hardwired for learning and they're always learning, not just learning math, not just learning to write, not just learning history, not just learning music, but learning how to be a good human being, learning how to communicate, learning how to share, learning how to be patient, but many of these children live in an environment where nobody is capable of teaching them these valuable life lessons. And the child knows that no one in my house, no one in my community can teach me this. The only way I can get this lesson is at school. And so they will act out. They will misbehave, not on purpose, but because they have to misbehave in order to see someone model, this is how you correct this behavior. They got to talk out of turn so someone will model for them. This is the way you are properly taught how to speak. In a child's mind, sometimes they have to misbehave in order to be trained on how to behave and how to correct misbehavior. Oh, the future, the teachers were floored. They were stopped in their tracks. And so was I. I was just an observer because that was my role. But it was a very profound lesson. It was a very profound lesson. Sometimes a person is bringing misbehavior to you so that you can give them the most proper, you know, response and train them on what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. But you got to model it. You got to demonstrate it. All right. And so. When you look at people in your environment and they're misbehaving, they're doing things that you cl can clearly see are incongruent with what's supposed to happen. It's important for you to then put on your wisdom hat and think very clearly about what is the purpose of the rule. Is the rule in place just to punish? Is the rule in place just to maintain a certain kind of order or are the rules there in order to cultivate a certain kind of an experience in all of the members are the rules there in place to ensure that everyone who's a part of the community has a shared experience and then thereby will cultivate shared values i would suggest to you that the rules are, are for that, for the latter. We have rules in place to exclude the behavior so that we can include the people. So in, order, in other words, the rules are constantly saying that we love you, we care about you, we want you here, we need you here. However, in order for you to be here, you cannot conduct yourself in this way. In order for you to be here and enjoy the environment with us, you cannot engage in these activities. That's what the rules are supposed to be reinforcing by my estimation. Okay. And so this is a lesson for the leaders. This is a dilemma that the leaders are going to face again and again and again and again and again. Because as the Yoruba say, no matter how beautiful the sky may be, there will always be some blemish. Those that blemish is the clouds. No one can walk without moving their head. There will always be imperfection. And there will always be people who, you know, make infractions. How do we maintain the highest standard to ensure the best quality without compromising the dignity of our members. How do we create rules and enforce rules in such a way that we invite the best of our people, but make it abundantly clear to them that the only way that you're going to be able to partake of the great things that we have to offer is that you have to stop doing that. and You have to refrain from doing that. But if you, what you choose to do or not do, we still are going to love you and care about you, but you just are not going to be able to participate with us in this capacity. All right. If you are a leader and you are totally committed to bringing about 
improvement, advancement, and progress through positive influence, then I want you to find out how Oloye, Obafemi, Origunwa, and the Orisha Lifestyle Academy can help you take your practice and your life to the highest level possible. Visit me at obafemio.com or orishalifestyle.com and let's start working together to help you to bring about the good condition for yourself and those who you are destined to serve. I look forward to working with you. Bye for now. Odabo.